energy on this issue. Unfortunately, the best we could do was uh, Judge Janine Pirro, <laughs> the host of uh, Justice with Judge Janine. Good to have you, my friend. Hey, Neil. What do you make of all these retailers who are doing this? Well, I think they're a bunch of wimps. I think they're capitulating to people who have political agendas. And I think that if you're in business, that's a dumb place to be. The bottom line is that business should appeal to people who like the goods that they're selling. And when you start playing political games in the business world, then you will suffer, I think, the effects of that. And there are a lot of vagaries that are involved in, in politics that, you know, if you like something, you're going to buy it. If you see something that's attractive, you'll buy it. Well, they say the business in a lot of these stores that have discontinued lines and all say, well, the business wasn't there. I'm thinking to myself, all right, well, now her father's become president of the United States. She's very influential. So you would think you'd wait it out to see how that goes, right? <laughs> well, but, but in addition to waiting it out, what we do know, Neil, is that the Ivanka Trump brand has increased 21% from 2015 to 2016. And the one who started all this at Nordstrom's, uh, you know, they actually ordered the spring line. So if it was so bad and sales were going down. So you think they were hearing from a lot of these types who say, no, no, yeah. I won't shop at Nordstrom if you have her line. Yeah, well, this hashtag grab your wallet that was started ironically by a woman, Shanna Coulter, right before the election, because she didn't like what Donald Trump said in that audio tape, you know, a supposed feminist. And when you think about it, Neil, it makes no sense. How dare you claim to be a feminist, try to take down an accomplished professional woman based upon her dad? How could you take down a woman who stands for everything that you supposedly, um, you you know, well, because that for. woman is the daughter of him, and they hate him, right? Well, so, so the, the, but, but here's what I don't understand. It, 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 why would the store cave if, if it, 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 I would imagine that a lot of very rich folks who shop, for example, at Nordstrom are Republicans, yeah. right? Yeah, and I think that Nordstrom's is going to, have, there's going to be a reaction. For every, for every action, there's a reaction. And I, I know a lot of people are very upset. You know, I travel a lot, Neil, during the week, you know, and, and I get a lot of feedback from people. You know, what the, what the left forgets is that Donald Trump was elected by people who weren't in the newspapers all the time, by people who aren't part of the mainstream media and who aren't part of the, you know, big mouths that we're hearing from right now, the hashtags. The people who elected Donald Trump with a silent majority, the people who work, they're watching all of this and make no mistake. But do they go to Nordstrom, those guys? Well, you know what? And at this point, probably not. And they never <laughs> and will. They know, well, that's what I was going to ask. Do they, does it boomerang? In other words, does it hurt these retailers? Because people are saying, boy, what you're doing doesn't seem fair or right. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah. And then, you know, for those stores that boomeranged and went, you know, and we're next, we're next. It's not based on sales. It's based on politics. You cannot mix politics and business. And this country, I don't know where we are right now, but it's not a good place. And more importantly, my issue was the woman thing. And the fact that you, how dare you call yourself a feminist and take this woman down. Um you catch the president's press conference today? The media is all aghast. Uh, the media is aghast, and the media will continue to be aghast. And you know what? When you've got someone like uh, Thomas Friedman saying that these are 9-11 type events uh, and Pearl Harbor type events, I mean, it, it, th this is not going to end soon. Yeah. I, I don't want to switch like a drunk here, but I, uh, now we're hearing uh, justice attorneys are filing a brief in court today saying the Trump administration is going to rescind the travel ban, which is on hold due to a restraining order. Uh, but it sounds like they're setting up the stage for refiling. Uh, how? That makes perfect sense to me. You don't have to fight it in the district court again. You don't have to appeal it to the Supreme Court. Just write up a new one that resolves all of the issues that weren't really clear. Smart. Do it. Uh, do you think that the release of this, the way he went about it, um, obviously if he had to do it again, it wouldn't be rushed or to, that, that he could compound the, the, the controversy? What do you mean? In other words, it revisiting this and, and starting from scratch just might you know get that this no. order could get it no 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 i think that the controversy had to do with what the white house counsel had to explain and that is it doesn't apply to people with green cards it doesn't right. apply to this one or that one it's clearly not a religious ban it's not a muslim ban 88 percent of the muslims and in, in in the world are not banned come on deal with it all right well i think you're coming out of your shell and i think it's working <laughs> And I think these therapy sessions we have are, are working. It's always right. good to be with All you. Right. All right. Uh, uh, Judge Denise Piero, love, love, love that energy, right? Can you imagine, <laughs> like, 
That's great energy. All right, we have a lot more coming up after this, including the latest update on this order, what the impact will be. We had a record on the Dow today here, so if the markets are concerned about press conferences and reporters getting their nose out of joint, look at that joint. They're buying like crazy. More after this. Good morning. What a nice group. Very good. Come on, that's what we like. Oh, thank you. That chair is very, very, very happy. Happy to Thank you. Well, thank you all for being here. I had a, uh, a lot of good discussions this morning. I'm negotiating a lot of contracts that are saving billions and billions of dollars for the American people and for all of us. And I'm very proud of it. You know, the A-35 fighter jet, uh, the Air Force One program, which was totally out of control, and now it's back very much in control, uh, and many other things. In addition, I had a very good phone call this morning about a major plant that's moving back into the United States. We'll be talking about it soon. And uh, what I do have is a little free time at about 12 o'clock. So I don't think the press will want to show up, but I think I'll have a press conference probably at 12 o'clock in the East Room. We had a little time in between things. So if the press would like to show up, I don't, will anybody show up to that press conference? Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Historically, they didn't care about these things. For me, they show up. So uh, I think 12 o'clock in the East Room of the White House, uh, we'll have a press conference. I just want to thank you folks for coming today. This was great. This was scheduled a long time ago. Some of my very, very uh, early supporters, and I've been your supporter also. Uh, we're doing really well. Uh, the fake news media doesn't like talking about the economy. I never see anything about the stock market sets new records every day, Chris. I never see that. Uh, but uh, I think the people understand it. We're giving a, a speech on in Melbourne, Florida, on uh, on Saturday. I think it's going to be around 4 o'clock, and I hear the tickets. You can't get them, but that's okay. That's better than you have too many, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going to be great. I look forward to that. So that'll be Melbourne at 4 o'clock. I really appreciate you folks. You folks have been so great, and uh, right from the beginning, and Tom, right, right at the beginning, just about every one of you, right at the right. beginning. Some were a little after the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> but we forgive. But we forgive. Uh, let's go around just for the media, and you'll introduce yourselves, and then we'll start talking, and uh, and I'll see the media back at 12 o'clock. Chris? Well, Mr. President, we're all honored to be here. This is really uh, our Trump caucus reconvening for the first time in a little bit, but our first meeting was the first part of March. Mm -hmm. uh, Duncan Hunter and I both endorsed you on February 24th, a week from tomorrow. So it's the one-year anniversary, but the, this is the Trump caucus reconvening, and we're just so honored you're taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us. Well, these are real friends. Western Thank New York. You. Thank you. That's right. Hey, Duncan Hunter, Mr. President. Can I just Very good to see you, sir. Okay. From Santiago, California. Kevin Kramer from North Dakota. Bill Schuster, uh, Western Pennsylvania, and Chairman of the Transportation Committee. That's right. So looking forward yeah, to yeah, it. We're going to give you some money for transportation. Amen. That's good. <laughs> Blue Boy Rutter, Hazelden, Pennsylvania. So, like, good territory. Mr. President, Tom Reed, it's a pleasure to travel with you to Florida. That's right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. President Tom Reed, I'm going to wait for Pennsylvania, and please indulge me 30 seconds. I have uh -oh. something for you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> something for you to sign. I think he might. I, I think this is great. This is supported by an engineer, a, a gentleman, Joe Papalina, who, 60-some years old, never voted, never registered. He registered for you and voted for you. Wow. And he asked me to give this to you. There's a nice letter there. Uh, I'm sorry, if I, Mr. Vice President, but uh, that's that. I'll set this over here. That's beautiful. Thank you. He's, uh, he's quite a, uh, he's, a, he's a talented guy. I can see that. The chairman and CEO of uh, Little League World Series Baseball, That's Steve Keener. Right. And Mr. Vice President, I kind of figured that you would be here as well. So that this is from the New York team last year that was in the World Series. Okay. Good. That's for you. And this is a jersey 
Uh, the, 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 an original jersey of the New York team in the World Series last year, and this is for you as well. Wow, so. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank them for me. I will do okay. that. Yes, Thank them for me. Thank you. Mr. Okay. President, Rick, we know who you are. <laughs> Scott Dangerlady from Tennessee, and I just want you to know that Tennessee is fully behind you. Marshall will attest to that. We're excited about the work you're doing. We know that health care and tax reform has to be done this year, and uh, we, we like the work you're doing, and we need you to help us continue yeah, to do we're it. We're going to get it done. And the health care is going really well, and now that we finally have Tom, Tom Price, Great. Dr. Tom Price, that was a big thing. I mean, we couldn't get him. Uh, we are going to be announcing, I guess I'll do it at 12 o'clock, a new Secretary of Labor who is really phenomenal. So that'll be at 12 o'clock. And uh, we're getting, I mean, this is the slowest in history, the approval of a cabinet. And these people are outstanding people. Uh, the man I'll be announcing for Labor is a star. Great person.